we've been playing organized soup for a long time now with him at AAU and it started all in fourth grade. I mean, you guys have been together playing ball for a long time, haven't you? And that's why I think our team are so much, I'm not going to say a lot better than some teams, but I've been with these guys since the fifth grade and I know everything about their game. They know everything about my game. So it's like, we like brothers out there at the same time, we teammates. And Coach Joyce is like a father figure to us too. So we know sometimes he might be wrong, he might not admit it. We know sometimes we might be wrong, but we not admit it. But when we get off the court, we know we all family. And that's the best thing about it. It's not just on the court, it's off the court too. I saw some tough love going on out there yesterday. <laughs> 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 you're not always, you're not, a, you're, you're yeah. not afraid to speak your mind. Yeah, you know, I'm a competitor, you know, and if I see something that's unfair, you know, that's cheating me and my teammates, I try to get my point across. But you know, as a player, you're, you're never going to be able to get better than a coach. It don't matter if the coach is wrong. You're always going to be wrong in front of the coach. You know, we have battles at practice sometimes, but it's going to be like that. When, you, when, you compet when you're competing and a call goes away that you didn't want it to go, or the other team gets a turnover and coach says steal their ball, but you know, that's just how the ball is flowing. Coach Drew just trying to get us better for any situation that happens during the game. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, it's, it's a, practice is impressive. You guys battle. I look at it like you're not going to get any better if you don't play hard. And you're not going to get any better if you're not trying to win every time. It seems like every drill that we do, we keep score. And if you lose, you run. No one likes to run. Running for no reason just is, is not what no one likes to do. So when you're out there, you're just kind of trying to compete trying to win every time you're out there. Just play as hard as you can. If you're going up against me, you're trying to bust me up because I'm going to come at you the same way, you know? And if you're against the first team or you're on the second team or you're on the third team, you just got to play hard. And Coach Drew knows things like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's a, I'm, I'm wondering, he, he is, Coach Drew has been sort of part dad for you, hasn't he? I mean, he's seen you come along. He's grown up with you. He knows you. He, he knows the ins and outs of you. You spend a lot of off court time, traveling time, all those sorts of things with him. He's got a little father figure in him, doesn't he? You know, uh, Coach Joyce is a great guy. You know, uh, he was the first person to bring God into my life. You know, doing that for me, not make me a better person and a better player too, also. You know, from day one, never had a father figure. I always looked at Gloria James as my father figure. So when I look at Coach Drew Joyce and I look at Frankie Walker, and I look at Gloria James as like my father figures, even though Gloria said my mother. Mm -hmm. LeBron, I, in AAU, um, you guys played a lot of games together. And in, in high school, it's sort of been the same way. Um, I don't know. You won like over 200 games as, as kids. And, and what I'm wondering, um, has winning become something that you expect? I think if you're not out there trying to win every night, there's no reason you should be out there even if you might be the sorriest team in America, or you might not have all the athletes that you need. You know, our team has never been the biggest team, not the most athletic, not the quickest, but about our team, we share the ball. And you know, if you had the best player on your team, say for instance me, and I like to pass the ball, they're gonna look up to you and they're gonna do the same. And I feel like if you just go out there and win, lose, or draw, if you give it 110% and play hard, that's all you can look for in the coaching as a player. You are a dominant player who could fill the cup for 50 a night, almost. I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, certainly against some teams, but you, you, like, you embrace the team concept. You, you're trying to make the other guys better, aren't you? Yeah, I know every night I can go out there and score 50, but how would it look? You know, I don't want to go out there and have 50 points, and in the box scores, I have 56 points. But Romeo Travis has six points. Drew Joyce has seven points. Sheon Conte has three points. Corey Jones and et cetera only have single digits. So when I only, when I only scored 25, you got Romeo Travis scoring 23. You got Drew Joyce scoring 17. So I like to share the wealth. You know, I just don't like getting all this for myself. It's all about the team. And I can't win by myself five on one, no matter how good I am. If I go out there by myself and against five players, they can beat me easily. So if I got confidence in my team, they got confidence in myself. We're going to go out there and give it our haul every night and have a chance to win. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this, this phenomenon that's become LeBron James. I mean, you know, I'm a Sports Illustrated reader, and, you know, and there you were. And, and then I learned something about you. You know, I mean, you know, it's, um, and, you know, I get on, jump on the web. There's six websites about you, LeBron. I mean, it's, you know, it's craziness going on here. And what I'm wondering is, 
uh, why are we paying so much attention and how the heck did all this happen do you think well it's just i think it's just my determination to get better every day my love for the game is beyond i don't know i can't even find it right now even if how good you are you should go out there and play like it's your last night plays like your last second of the game plays like your last second of practice and I might be good right now, but it's somebody out there working hard as I am, trying to get better than LeBron, because they see I'm number one. So they want to be number one. The reason I think that all, a lot of the nation knows me is because my determination shows off on the court. And that's all I look for in myself. It, it, it is, um, it's an amazing thing. I mean, you, you gotta go home at night with your mom and say, what's, what's going on here though? I mean, you know what I mean? It, it's even you, uh, I'm sure you've spent time at home and away and on the road and certainly with the coach saying, what's up? What's this all about? I mean, is, is that the case? You you must in some ways be amazed by all of this. I mean, here we are talking together. You time. know, uh, I'd be amazed by some of the things that I do on the court sometimes to be able to make some kind of shots that I know a lot of people can't make and to make passes a lot of people can't make. But I let my coaches and my friends come up to me and say, Brian, what's what's going on with all this? Why are we getting so much exposure? You know, thank you for getting so much exposure to our team and people in the city saying, thanks St. Vincent, St. Mary and LeBron James for getting Akron City on the map. You know, when people see Akron on the map now, they're going to say St. Vincent, St. Mary, LeBron James, Coach Drew Joyce. And everything that I do is based on my friends, my teammates, and my family. How are you handling the, the hype and the pressure? And the, I mean, I... You know, I've talked to uh, your family, and I've talked. You know, I've talked to the inner circle, and and uh, um, you know, they say you're handling it unbelievably well. And I'm I'm wondering what what's keeping your feet. What's what's keeping you? What's keeping it real for you? Well, they are basically, and with my friends, I can be myself. I can laugh. We play video games, and we joke around. We just do what we do. We've been doing since the fifth grade when. Our name was nowhere in books. So we never changed, we just got taller, just got older, just got a little heavier. And just be ourselves. It don't matter how old you get, you should always be yourself. And we know what's right from wrong. So we know when we can be laughing and joking around, but when it's time to get to business, we keep our heads level and we know what to do. Mm -hmm. Ron, how do you know who to trust? The people who has been there since day one, which is my friend, my inner circle is my mother, my father figure, Eddie Jackson, my coaches and my friends, and my two uncles. Keeping it tight is what's going to keep it. That's all it's about. You know, you can't break a chain. If you break a chain, it won't work. I think that's got to be hard. Is it hard? Is it a difficult thing? Oh, it's not. Of sort of people tug in and pull in. And... Oh, it's not difficult at all because while I'm in the middle, the circle is keeping them out. You know, I got my friends. They notice it. Sometimes I might not notice it. Sometimes they might not notice it and I notice it. We know who, which ones are the good ones and we know which ones are the bad ones. You know, a person that come up to you and might want to be your friend and for that time being, you can. But don't come calling me, asking me for stuff because, you know, my friends don't even call me ask for stuff, you know, because they know I'm just, if you're a real friend, you won't ask for anything. You should just look for them to give, be given to you. You seem like a private person. Is that, is that true? Are you private? Oh, not at all. You know, my friends know everything about me. <laughs> my mother know everything about me. I'm not private at all. You know, there's, there's certain things that you got to keep from your, your parents, but my friends know everything about me. So there's no privacy about me. Yeah. Who do you, who do, you do most of your listening to? I mean, who, who do you listen to mostly about all of this, about what's going on? Is it your I mean, Eddie just said, mom's the anchor. <laughs> you know, he was like, Mom is the anchor. Is she is she the one that's that's is she, is she yes. the anchor? Mom is the anchor. She's taught me so much. What's right from wrong, the good and evil, you know, who to trust and who not to trust. But when I'm out there listening, I'm listening to everybody. Everybody that has some info to tell me, some insight to tell me. Because if you get a lot from everybody, you can put it all in one and make a combo that's ridiculous, you know? So I listen to everything and of course you gotta take some things out, lay things to the side, but all the info you can get, you just try to take it in and use it to your advantage. It hasn't necessarily been easy growing up. 
has it. I mean, there's been bumps in the road. Um, you know, I, I asked uh, um, Coach Joyce, where did you first run into LeBron? So go down the hill to the stop sign, take a right, go across the tracks, and those projects right there, that's where I, that's where I first met LeBron. So it hasn't been easy for you, has it? It hasn't been easy at all. You know, before I was in the stable house that I'm in now, I had moved at least seven times in a year. And when I was living, when you was talking about Elizabeth Park, down in the projects, you know, it's hard times. You see everything from crackheads, you know, to drug dealers, to gunshots every night, to police sirens. And I think it just made me stronger, you know, to, it made me stronger in a way not to do those things and to know what's right from wrong down there. And I think if you get things like that, it makes you tougher because you know what you have seen, you have seen so much that you might, you don't want to see that again. You see the light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, down in the projects, there wasn't no light at the end of the tunnel, so it was all darkness. So it was like in Alaska or something. <laughs> <laughs> you see the light now? Yeah, I see the light a lot. You know, and uh, I'm trying to reach it. You know, it's it's close, but I just got to keep working. The um, When you walked on the court as a freshman, um, did you have any sense of, of this gift that you may have? No, my freshman year. It was crazy. The first game we ever played was against Chicago Falls at their home court. You know, we were same in St. Mary, you know, just a a couple of freshmen, four or five freshmen coming in, you know, they not thinking we we're gonna make an impact. In the first game I had fifteen points, you know, eight rebounds, maybe five assists. And I knew that we had something started because we looked so good for us to be so young. And from there it was just it just clicked. Like from there we just kept getting better every day every night, every minute, every second. Four years of getting better. Four years went so fast. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like watching the college So program. fast. Oh my God, that's a scary group. I'm wondering um, about what is it in the, about the game that drives you? What is it that, what's your passion? What do you love? What, what, what is it that just, that, uh, that fills you up about hoops? To see my team get excited. You know, for me, I can easily be a ball hawk, shoot all I want because, you know, I got the the real power to not do that because I want to see my team be excited too. When I pass the ball and see my teammate Romeo Travis gets a dunk, it electrifies me. When I kick it out to Drew Joyce and he hits a, a big three, you know, when I kick it down to Sheon Cotton and Willie McGee and they get layups, it makes me so excited that they're into the game as much as I am. And last year uh, in the playoffs at halftime, I had, Five points, nine rebounds, and nine assists. And a guy had asked me, you know, it was a pretty bad halftime, isn't it? I said, how? You know, I'm sharing the ball. I'm getting rebounds. I'm to the point guard. And at halftime, we was winning by 35. You know, it's not bad at all. I'm loving it. You want the rock when it counts? Oh, yeah, I want it in my hands. Well, when it's in your hands, that don't mean you have to shoot. You know, you can pass the ball. You can do a lot of things, but in the final moment, yes, I want the ball in my hands to make the last decision. Mm -hmm. It is about decision making at that point, isn't it? When you're counting down. Yeah, you know, it's a 32 minute game. You gotta, you can be fast, all fast, but the last two minutes, just like the two minute drill in football, the last two minutes, you gotta slow down and think about every choice that you have to do. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, um, Someone close to me said, and I, I thought this was interesting, LeBron James, somebody here, local, said, LeBron James is an artist, and the court is his canvas. Do you sometimes feel like an artist out there a little bit? You know, I just feel like, I just feel like I'm just the anchor of our team. You know, by me setting examples for the younger kids, and even for the older kids, you know, I'll tell a senior sometimes something, and I know sometimes they don't mean it when they talk back to me, you know, but I know they listen, and that's all I can take from it. I just feel like when I'm out there, it's just, it's like another home for me, because I'm having fun doing it. And there's nothing better else to have fun by doing, you, doing something you love to do. Do you play for someone else other than yourself? Who are you playing for mostly? Is it your mom, team? What? Or, or is it or is it for you? When you're on the court, who are you playing for? Of course, I'm playing for myself, of course. And of course, my teammates. 
That's all it's about, you know. Why be out there playing for the crowd? It's not good at all. You know, I'm playing for my teammates that's here every day, sweating, bleeding, every night out there playing for myself and my teammates. And I think I can say the same about them. What's the, if you just kick back in your time, I mean, I saw you talking with your friends and just chilling. What's the dream come true for you? What's, what's the dream come true in all this? Oh, my dream come true is to wake up every morning and see I'm happy with what I'm doing. And then if I'm still living with my mother or if she next door to walk into her room and wake up and see that she's happy every single day. You know, sometimes you want to have a little spurt when something might not go right. But for the full, at least 20 hours of the day, I want myself and my mother to be happy. The dream isn't? The dream isn't about the NBA. The NBA and the and competing at that level doesn't have it doesn't come into your you know I'm not even talking about going to college or any of that make decision making but is part of the dream playing at that level. I feel that the NBA is a goal for me, and I look at the goal and my dream is two different things. My dream is to see my mother happy every day, but my goal, long term goal, is to get to the NBA. And that's what I love to do: is to play basketball against the best in the world. The coach said that there are um, basketball players, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what his quote is, that you are a... People who basketball, players, people who are, people who play basketball. And that are basketball, basketball players, players, and that you are a player. Um, and then it's, it's an interesting compliment, you know, that you, you are a player, you encompass all the skills. Do you feel like you have some weaknesses that you still need to work? Oh, yes. You know, it's always weaknesses in everyone's game. It's just if, if you show them on the court, because if you show them, the, the person beside you is going to try to take advantage of you. You know, it's weaknesses all over the place, but you just got to polish them up every night at practice. That's what practice is for, to get better at what aspects you need to get better at. And for me, I just need to polish every piece and puzzle of my game to get better for the next level. When the papers say, and I've read a lot, when the papers say, you're the next Bex. You're the, the, the chosen one, the, the next Michael, the next Magic. And, you know, and, you, know uh, you know, what it, is it hard not to believe the hype at times? Or how does that, how does that strike you when they say that sort of thing? Well, when it, it strikes me with a lot of passion. And it makes me work even harder to get to the level that Magic, Michael, Bird, Julius, and now that Kobe and Tracy is in the league now, you know, everyone when they was in, when they was younger wanted to fly like Jordan, wanted to dish no look passes like Magic, wanted to jump out of the gym like Julius, and wanted to shoot like Bird. You know, it's great to be compared to some of the greats. And when I look at that, I say I want to be like Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, not on the court, but off the court. Mm -hmm. Are we asking too much of LeBron James? Have we set the bar too high? Are there expectations that we shouldn't be expecting? I think I'm setting the bar for myself, you know, and I'm just going to keep working hard and keep doing what I keep on doing, what I've been doing for the last four years to get myself better. And the bar going to be even higher if I keep working. I'm, I'm just wondering if the, if the public, if, if we, if we've set the bar too high, if we've set the bar so high that only that that you may be destined for failure, and who's who's the hard? I mean, do you pay attention to any of that, or are you harder on yourself than any of us could ever be? I don't think I'm hard on myself. You know, when you're hard on yourself, it gets to a point where you might be too hard and it might be too much pressure. If you just do what you've been doing, don't change. You know, you you might read the clippings, you're gonna read everything about yourself and about your teammates, but when it's when the clip is, is down, with you gotta come back to yourself and realize who you are. I'm LeBron James and that's not gonna change. Is there anybody that you can't compete with out there, you think? I think I'm capable of competing with anybody in the United States of America. You know, anybody in the universe I'm capable of competing with. It's just if you work harder than that person. Yeah. For the sake of argument, I, I just wanna just say, let's just say you enter you enter the draft last year. Just for the sake of argument, um, do you have do you have the skills? Personally, I think I do. You know, but who knows? 
you know, who to say that I have the skills for the NBA because I haven't been there. You know, no one's seen me put on an NBA uniform to be able to go into the NBA and, you know, make progress the first year or the second year. You know, who knows? It's when I get there, when I have to cross that road, we'll see. Big step. Real big step. Scary step. Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. You psyched? Excited about a lot. You know, I'm excited every time I go on the court. There's nothing more to be excited about is loving to do what you gotta do. There's um I asked I asked uh, Eddie today about forgetting or remembering where you come from because I think your life is gonna change. <laughs> and I'm wondering, are you gonna keep are you gonna keep keep it right here, are you gonna keep Akron and the memories and growing up and you're gonna Keep it in your soul and never forget. Always. You can never forget where you came from. You know, Akron has not always been good for me, but it's always been my home. It don't matter if I had bad times, it's always been where I live. I never moved to Canton, never went to Youngstown, never went to Cleveland. Akron has been the only place for me these last 17 years. And you just got to remember those things. You know, maybe you might be in a luxury house in Beverly Hills someday, but you always got to remember what was your lane on that. You guys have grown out of this house, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you know, by just being me and my mother, you know, it's, you know, it's, you've you grown got, out of this gym. <laughs> yeah, we've grown out of the gym. Um, it, it's amazing. I mean, that you know, with all the pl pulling and pushing and tugging and you know, like Nike and Adidas and you know, like this 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 big thing, like wor worrying away out there about LeBron. And I I know you're insulated from it, but. Do you sometimes sort of wish that um, you could just play the game and nobody was paying attention? You know, when I'm out on the court, that's how it feels, just how you just said it. It feels to me like no one is paying attention to what I'm doing. No one is paying attention to what my team is doing. We're just out there just playing like we've been playing, like we was on the outdoor court, 2 o'clock in the morning, no one was there but us. And that's how you got to look at it. You just got to make it a, just a square. You know, it's just a TV square. And when we out there, we just all about focus. You know, maybe 17,000 in the crowd. But when you step up and make that big shot, you got to just make sure there's, there's no one in your way. No one. You've made your mark in AAU, fourth grade. You've made your mark here at St. V's. Um, are you hoping to make your mark at the next level? Yes. Maybe that's college or NBA. I'm trying to make my mark. Wherever I step foot in, you know, maybe it might not be on the court. You know, I'm trying to make my mark off the court too with kids too. You know, everywhere I go, I try to make my mark. So when they leave, they say, you know, LeBron James is a good basketball player, but he was better off the court. Maybe they'll say uh, there was Mike, there's Michael Magic, but they aren't going to compare you. You're going to have your own little niche there. You know, it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. The best thing that, that could ever happen to me, if I if they can say that, you know, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, great people. Not great basketball players, but great people. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.